It's been announced today that Albert Goubet, the man best known to the world for making his fortune in retailing with the Quicksave Empire and his personal pact with God, has died at the age of 87. The designs seem to go from very basic to the more elaborate with extra fixtures and fittings, but all propose a modern polished concrete connection structure at the heart of the new bridge. Three of us that are involved, that's Ralph Peake, Jan Tinsley and myself, have met um, regularly over the last three years just to explore some learning and, and development around being positive and building some positive habits. Well, obviously at some point in the future I'm sure the tradition of increasing open and accessible, um, increasing the access to make Parliament, our tin world even more accessible, I'm sure that will continue but I think the feeling is it needs a resolution of tin world. You, but it's quite clear, will not be running horse trams again. That's correct and it's with a very heavy heart that we've made the decision that we have made. So it should be easier than before, you just fill in a form on the government website and you get access to that information. Yes, we've had several thousand visitors, a lot of comments, the most worrying being from holidaymakers who said if they could cancel their pre-book trips this year they would do so. This is fantastic, we are so excited to be here and uh, so thrilled that we can finally stand in the fruits of everybody's labours and everybody's generosity, it's, it's fantastic. As far as eGaming is concerned, this is the event that everybody comes to. It's the biggest one in Europe, probably the second biggest one in the world. And as you said, anyone who's anyone wants to do anything in eGaming will be at this show. Listen, I want a say in a referendum on our membership of the EU. It's very complex. You don't get prisons like this in the UK. Uh, you deal with uh, large numbers, but we have female prisoners, male, young people, adults, uh, convicted, unconvicted. You don't deal with that complexity in the UK. We saw these great pictures, you know, the, the, the look with a, a new unit and there were going to be pods outside for the, the, the students to live in. Is that still happening? No, no, none of that's happening. Um, this main building that we're in here now will be refurbished um, as it stands so there'll be no structural alteration to this building. Carpet's going down, furniture going to go in shortly, so yeah. Is it hit your expectations? I think it's better. Oh. I, I think it's better really. I mean, we've, we've put a lot of thought and effort into it and, you know, we're very discerning on what we choose. And... Well, the amendments that Mr Houghton have tabled, um, we feel are extremely dangerous and very, very irresponsible. This is the Alamand Prison induction wing. Everybody that comes into prison will spend the first 72 hours in this, in this unit learning the rules and regulations of the prison. And uh, it also gives a chance to, or for us to assess them uh, physically, mentally, and make sure that we are keeping them safe and an appropriate place. The first thing to do is to clear away a, a line-up for the tram to get up. It's one just pulling away behind us now. We've got the concrete yeah, in the front, the concrete on, so that's got this. That's been brought in to site by mixers, dropped onto the wagon on the front, taken up to make concrete drains, and then we'll clear the, the, the culverts down the side, and then any flood water in the future hopefully will be taken away off the track and dumped over the side out of the way. The, the, there will be changes to the way in which they operate. It won't be run quite the same as the way in which Douglas Borough Council uh, ran them, but it will be operated through our um, uh, Heritage Railways uh, th through the um, Public Transport Division. Very interesting and it's gone really fast. I mean I can't believe it's five years already. We, we will do everything we can to invest in trying to improve safety mm. um, over the course of the term but really for us it's about developing the, about developing the event delivery around that. In addition to the ageing population that I think um, everybody knows about, there is clear evidence now that the population has been declining over these last two years. We've had different companies over looking at different angles to find out if it's safe to play on. And finally, they've been over this week and they've, they've sorted the main part of it out. Yeah. So they're telling us now we could, it's usable and it could be opened on Easter Monday. 
Well, it's been an eventful sailing for the Mananan. It's here in Douglas tonight, but as it came in, apparently some sort of failure of the engines, according to some eyewitnesses we've been talking to, and it actually collided with the Victoria Pier. Uh, we've got these close-ups here, and you can see uh, the, the outside part of the catamaran, there's definitely quite large damage. Uh, reports there, that centre section, which uh, is in very white in these pictures, that, that uh, is uh, quite a severe bang as well. And I turned up to see the Treasury Minister today, and uh, he advises me that uh, my position at the post office is no more. You can see now, uh, this is what we can see of the um, car itself, number three, the tram, and it's all covered up in tyre pooling. Um, quite a few people up there are still picking up parts of that tram. The Isle of Man is not in the crosshairs on this. The whole debate clearly though is about the use of offshore facilities uh, initially through Panama but it'll broaden out into, into other areas. Yes, there's one beacon being lit on the island which, yeah. is, which is here and then the civil defence are shining a light from the top of Snowfell. The problems that we had were that the, the report that was delivered by the government, the proposals delivered by the government uh, contained serious flaws uh, in terms of the amount and level of funding that was required from the public, from the taxpayer. Well, it's taken a few years to convince the government that we really are serious. It's, uh, it's, the point is that the government has always uh, felt that uh, things have to be done professionally from people across. You know, turnkey operation to repair something. And they've all been talking about millions of pounds to do it. And we've uh, We've recognised that it's nowhere near that, but we do need money. Yeah. Definitely need money. So, as from Friday afternoon, sometime before five o'clock is the plan, there will be a system of two-way traffic for cars and motorbikes. Pedestrians will still have to use the temporary footbridge. The cars going this way, so they're heading the, from the, you know, Dead Douglas to Ramsey, have the priority. Uh, but cars can go the other way, but obviously it's uh, one lane only. Thank you, Dean Stadora, for your kind words of welcome and of encouragement. Diana and I are delighted that your island recommended to the Queen that we be given the role of Her Majesty's new Lieutenant Governor and spouse. And yeah, it's been fantastic, absolutely amazing weather. Um, and I think, you know, I think the good thing is we're just, you know, all, all the elements that we've planned and considered, we feel um, are kind of a, of a right for what we're seeing here. So just a big focus around uh, non-race entertainment, and that's that's really what we're going to be what we're going to be looking at. Yes, this is this is a curved ball. It's not something government normally do. We were looking to replace Glenside and build a 60 bed unit there it became we became aware of a all singing all dancing purpose built 68 bed nursing home unit which had been built which was um, going to be ready probably by the end of september and it, it just made economic sense to say what would it cost for us to buy it as opposed to build our own one they, they've succumbed to very persuasive arguments such as i did once upon a time I haven't always been pro-life, um, but I, until such time I stopped to think about things and, and to, to, I came to a realisation that young people were being murdered in the womb. And the fact is, is that our current restrictive laws are forcing women into that option uh, because those that don't have the money to go across and pay for an abortion are having to take matters into their own hands. I think it's a really good day for the Isle of Man and for British democracy. I think this is a really strong vote by the British people who have said very loudly and very clearly that they want to re-engage with the world. Uh, two thirds of this field will be taken up, yeah, uh, and it's two showrooms um, for the Jackson's luxury brand and our motor mal volume motor proposition uh, and one big after sales facility. <laughs>